Hey there, it is chapter four of the scaffolding project, hashtag half century countdown. Today's episode is friendships and the way that I have started to look at some friendships that I have had throughout the years. I have the love language of quality time. I love hanging out with you, being with you, spending time, listening to you, sharing your ups, your downs, your challenges, and your successes. And I have some friendships where it it's a really close relationship, but it's one-sided in that way. So I'm really great at listening and hearing them talk about the great and the tough. I'm great at showing up to support. But when I'm looking for that back, it's just, it falls short. In fact, it might even go so far as to be unsupportive. For the sake of uh, knowing that I create my own life and that I am the creator of my entire environment, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus with specific examples this week because I don't want this to land like I'm talking about like you over there, you suck. That's not what this is. This entire process is self-reflective because I get to choose my environment as well as my mindset. But something I've noticed is I wanna be cheered on. I wanna be championed and I wanna be listened to. Oftentimes when that one-sided relationship has happened, it's because I have felt less than the person. Maybe I thought they were cooler than me, more successful than me, um, more popular than me. And so just having them share their personal heart and struggles with me made me feel like I was worth more because somebody that I had such a high regard for actually wanted to talk to me thought that I had good advice, that I was something buddy worth, that I was somebody worth sharing their life with. Mm -hmm. As I've raised up my own self-worth, mm -hmm. though, I've realized mm -hmm. that support, cheerleading, mm -hmm. listening, helping, guide is a two-way street. And so I've taken some stock with some of the relationships that I've created over the years and realized that, you know, if it's that one-sided, then maybe I need to find more of a two-way street relationship. I have this very good friend. We've been BFFs since college. I'm sad to say we don't talk much these days, but it's not for any reduction in my affection for her. We used to joke that I was the emotional one and she was the physical one. So she was the, let's go out and do stuff. Let's have an adventure. Let's go on a trip. Let's go out. Let's go to this party. Let's do, do, do. And I was the emotional one. Let's talk about it. Let's envision something. Let's create something. These days, I'm definitely still that quality time love language. My favorite thing to do is to talk about big conceptual ideas like transformation and quantum physics, manifesting your life, creating your life, and being 100% responsible for the results, which I see as a huge access to freedom. That's the kind of stuff I'm enjoying talking about today. And of course, I love sharing all the wonderful things that are going on in my professional life. Because can I just tell you, I'm on fire and I'm having a blast. <laughs> What's interesting, though, is sometimes because my business is non-traditional, although becoming more traditional by the moment, it's home-based, it's online, it's team-based, and people have certain emotional reactions to those phrases. And so maybe they don't want to hear it. But you know what? I am up to big things. And if we're going to be in a relationship together, not only do I want to hear all the amazing things that you're up to so I can cheer you on and listen when you're down and struggling so I can support and help, I want you to be willing to do that for me too. So friendships for hire. I'm shifting my friendships. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to work on that. Let's see. I'm shifting my friendships 
It's a friend shift. I hope you have a great night and I'll see you next time.